Today we are discussing the forgotten little brother of the Saint Lunatics. Quite literally the younger brother of Key One, one of the group's original founding members. Murphy had arguably the second most successful solo career after Nelly. However, despite the gold certification he received on his first album, his career quickly stalled and faded away. A lot of that had to do with the label that was signed to in 2000, Universal. Today we're gonna break down what exactly happened to Murphy Lee that prevented him from being the next big thing. Let's dig in. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Around the year 2000, the world was absolutely losing their minds. For the plaster-wearing rapper from St. Louis, none other than the overnight sensation, Nelly. Naturally, a year later, when he introduced his crew to the world, the women shrieked, the men emulated, and overall the world paid attention. Nelly the St. Lunatics in the house. Surprise! Now these are surprise guests because we didn't know that they were coming through. Just today. rolling up in here, never right doing his that. thing. Just float one. We got to keep the big thing. You gotta give it up for them because it's seven million. Yeah, albums, man. man, and counting, and counting. Yeah, yeah. That's big. Luna takes almost double, baby. For right. sure. After the platinum success of Free City, fans everywhere waited with bated breath for the group's follow-up offering. Unfortunately. As the years passed with no group album, and several of the rappers tentatively embarking on their own solo careers, the fans ended up flocking behind their breakout sensation that brought them the St. Lunatics, Nelly. In the midst of all this uncertainty, Murphy Lee emerged and showed the world that he was someone to look out for. Growing up, Murphy followed his big brother Key One everywhere. With an absent father and a mother that assigned Key One responsibility of Murphy Lee at every opportunity, Key One had very little choice in the matter, and let's just say Murphy Lee had no complaints. I was one of those kids that my mama used to make, make them take me with them. You know what I'm saying? So I learned things very fast. All right, let's let's back it up a little bit. So you was you how'd you start getting into rap? You you know, you 11, 12, 13, high school, was a high school thing, cipher and all that kind of situation. It was, it was a, a group called Bulletproof Records, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They came out and they actually dropped a straight record and they were selling it at the store. Right, right, old school. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, at the right. people shops. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like that and everything like that. And we went to school, them kids was reciting it, you know what I mean? Like that. And people from their neighborhood, it just was something big bigger. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, they felt right. like we could. And that actually was the first they threw their release party and uh, had a contest and that was our first St. Lunatic's first um uh, we first talent show we ever got in. And we won. Always tagging along with his big brother, Murphy Lee met Nelly when he was in the fourth grade, and when Key One and Nelly became friends, that automatically included Murphy Lee. From the early days, Murphy Lee was always the tag along, the plus one, and the baby. When he first got signed, Murphy Lee was only 15 years old, and due to his youth, he had to fight for his place in the group as they initially only wanted to place him as a feature. But after pouring in hours of work and proving himself and his skills, they had to admit that despite his tender age, Murphy Lee was a lunatic in full. After proving his worth, Murphy Lee quickly became a fan favorite. He began building his own brand within the group, and though initially a solid and insistent group performer, Hearing girls scream his name made him think, okay, maybe I could do a solo album. Now as a fan favorite and a proud rep of his home city, when Nelly became too busy for any gig, show or feature, the spot was consistently passed to Murphy Lee to the point where other artists actually wanted him on songs despite his age. One of his first proper features as a solo artist came around 2001 when he appeared on the song Batter Up from Nelly's Country Grammar album. The song actually charted in the R&B chart in the low 80s and went gold. Not bad for one of his first features. Free City dropped around 2001 and gained platinum certification. And soon after Murphy's next big feature also charted, this time much higher. Air Force Ones dropped around 2002 off of Nelly's Nellyville album and did well on the charts. Don't get me wrong man, I'm Murphy Lee ain't dumb man. Cause if that shoe is on that shelf you should have some man. He then dropped his first mixtape, My Name Is Lee, and began working on his debut. The album was to be titled Murphy's Law, and he was just about to complete with the recording when he received a beat from an unknown producer called Coco. 
Coco came with this beat and I'm like, I gotta do it. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna say on this throne but I gotta do it. This gotta make the album. And we was about to do it. And next thing you know a situation came where Puff was like, I'm looking for a song for the bad boy soundtrack. Nelly was like, yeah, we'll find one. And we didn't have one. And a lot of people don't know that that was actually created for Murphy's Law. The song he was talking about is of course the Grammy winning chart topping track called Shake Your Tail Feather with Nelly and Diddy. The song did wind up featuring on his album as well as on the soundtrack of Bad Boys 2. Around the same time, he recorded one of his other biggest tracks called What The Hook Gon' Be which actually came out when Murphy Lee literally had no idea what to use as a hook for the song. Upon hearing the beat, he immediately smashed out 3 sets of 16 bars and presented his verses to Nelly who was immediately impressed but asked, where is the hook? While messing around in the studio and the back and forth between the group members, the hook presented itself, what the hook gon' be? The single wound up being the first single dropped from his album around 2003 but did not immediately catch on to the public. His album Murphy's Law dropped a month later in September. September 23rd, Murphy Law, I said Murphy Law, Murphy's Law in stores. Make sure you cut. Okay, stop, won't stop, rock it to the. Cause we. Uh, I should be considered a winner. Not number one, but a contender. I've been ready and waiting like a white man's dinner. Exceeding all expectations and picking at number eight on the Billboard 200. Immediately after dropping the album, he was brought on tour with Nelly, which went awfully. Murphy Lee had been snuck onto the tour, which meant that while he saw the world in the month they toured, he didn't really make much money or get to promote his album. He barely had any interviews or shows, and every interview interaction was forced from Nelly's side. Nelly would grab Murphy Lee around the neck and pull him into the interview to introduce him but it was awkward and didn't appear to be natural. This is probably one of the first signs that Murphy Lee was being stalled in his career. Instead of interacting with his fans, pushing his album and doing his own interviews, he was simply Nelly's plus one, his protege and to his fans back home he had disappeared. Murphy Lee then returned from his tour with Nelly expecting to feel down and depressed about his wasted month but all was not lost. When he returned, he found out that What The Hook Gon' Be had taken off. Less than two months after it was released, Murphy's Law gained a gold certification from the RIAA. Around 2004, two other singles were released from his album titled Love Me Baby and Hold Up. After this, it was time to work on his second album and put it out. But this is where the problems began. The reason why Murphy Lee didn't come out with a second studio album is because I was caught in the sauce. Point the blame to myself. I probably didn't know how to be famous. I didn't like putting myself in situations where I felt vulnerable to some bull for just to get some fame or just to get some props or just to get my face an upshot or something like that. And I'm very laid back also. I'm very shy also. I'm very shy so I didn't do the fame thing well. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think... um. I don't think I was loud enough for Universal. In addition to this, Murphy Lee also got caught up in the middle of his label transitioning. At the time Universal was merging with Motown and Def Jam and with everything going on in the office. As well as Murphy Lee's album only going gold as opposed to Nelly's multiple multi-platinum albums. He was overlooked. Nelly was the biggest money maker in the building and so the rest of the St. Lunatics were looked upon as his charity cases. Nelly's albums and appearances consistently took priority which resulted in Murphy Lee's albums consistently being pushed back to wait on his former groupmate. I think I got caught in the sauce where, where a lot of people was telling me like, oh we gotta wait, we gotta drop this Nelly album or wait we gotta drop this such and such album and then after that we are gonna get to yours. When Nelly would go to the offices to fight his case, they would placate him with promises that were never kept. Ultimately, he experienced a wake up call and decided to do his utmost to leave the label. A 5 year long battle with Universal saw Murphy Lee release only a handful more singles in the next few years. 2006's That Bullshit, 2007's Hayton and 2008's Murph Dirty and My Shoes, none of which charted. Now look at me, look at 
while it took a long time for Murphy Lee to actually spit from Universal, he did eventually get it right, calling it a teaching moment and eventually he went independent. The worst days is being this big and not owning anything that you have. Like when I was 15 years old, I signed my life away and didn't even know it. I didn't get my mother's permission. She said she was gonna sign it with me. She didn't. It became a deadline. I signed it anyway. We ended up being one of the biggest groups in St. Louis at the time. It was great. But not knowing that 6, 7, 8 years later that this would affect my life. I think if I knew more what I know now, I would be able to maneuver and you know, get out of those situations. But we didn't know no better. Now of course, Murphy Lee was also making his own business moves while trying to remove himself from Universal. Around 2006, he became the owner of his own restaurant in St. Louis, Good For You Cafe. The restaurant, as the title implies, serves healthy food of all varieties from vegetarians to omnivores and is a family-friendly establishment. He also founded his own brand slash label with his brother You See Me Entertainment and released two more mixtapes through the label titled Battle Up and The Return of the Superman Big Lee as well as eventually dropping his sophomore solo attempt You See Me, none of which charted. I wanted to start a movement slash fraternity more so. A voice for all the things we want to do. Film, movies, anything we wanted to get into, the Moscato, everything. I wanted it kind of to be under the same umbrella. I wanted to be a brand more so than a label. I created You See Me because it was needed. It's an independent label that takes artists from St. Louis who may not be able to sell a certain amount of records. I want to make sure they get exposure and be a part of the St. Louis movement. Around this time, the possibility of a St. Lunatics reunion was all but guaranteed. City Spot had been released from prison. The group had also confirmed a sophomore album to the public and were back in the studio recording. They then released a couple of singles to the public and the world was excited. Unfortunately, the reunion album ended up being forgotten and it seemed like Murphy Lee would have a hard time returning back to music. After going independent, he tried to release a few mixtapes here and there. He also released a couple of singles, but nothing really got off the ground. After a bit of a hiatus, he finally dropped new music around 2015 in the form of Back to Basics, a collab album with J.E. That was eventually followed by his 2020 mixtape, B.O. The Soundtrack to Riva. Other than that, Murphy Lee had been very quiet in the last decade. He became a happily married family man, a married singer-actress Seven Lee, whom he shares a couple of children with. Around 2020, during the height of the pandemic, Murphy Lee went viral for being himself. With everyone isolating at home and having time to reflect on their lives, listen to music, and take another look at the nostalgic soundtrack of their life, the world seemingly came to the unanimous decision that Murphy Lee was an absolute treasure to society. For three days, starting around March 29, 2020, Murphy Lee was the recipient of thousands of tweets expressing love for him. Memes were posted, as well as clips from his input to the lunatics, shoutouts from fans, certified hip-hop magazines, and even fellow certified rap stars and NBA players. The year is 2020 and Murphy Lee is trending because the world is finally giving him his flowers. Double XL posted this alongside a video of him performing. This was retweeted by Meek Mill, who co-signed and added his own positive message to the rapper. The trend spread over the world, with Murphy Lee setting aside time to directly answer his fans. At a time when all humans could use a little love, and y'all threw it my way. Well, right back to you. Sheesh, y'all don't know what this human being going through. But I'm actually in a great space at this quarantined moment. Appreciate ya. Just months prior to all of this, Murphy Lee had also featured in a video of BET's Finding Them series. In the episode, Murphy Lee discussed his love for each of the lunatics and his gratitude to Nelly for helping him achieve his stardom. When asked would he ever be with any of his former groupmates, Murphy Lee had only this to say. Do I have any beef with anybody in my group? I don't want no beef with them grown men. I <laughs> I ain't saying they're gonna beat me up, <laughs> but all my life I ain't been, I ain't never tried to fight a world but wait to try to beef with them now. But um, nah, man, I'm family for life, man. I can't do nothing but I always be thankful for the situation that I've been in. Uh. Nowadays, 
Murphy Lee is still incredibly active in the music industry. He continues to perform and drop his own music, and the music seems to be more mature than his previous work. Most recently, he dropped his latest album, Second Time Around Around 2021. I'm talking back when I was 28, going on 35, had my own wine, I was good, I was living life. The humble album is dedicated in its entirety to his family. Unfortunately, the album is not available through mainstream streaming applications and can only be bought through his website or by texting him. On the positive side, the album is only $10 and promises to be a beautiful, nostalgic, yet mature addition to your music collection. Murphy Lee gets almost 900k monthly listeners on Spotify and his most listened to songs are Shake Your Tail Feather, What The Hook Gon' Be, Stomp, Love Me Baby, and Hold Up. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What's happened to Murphy D in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests? Be sure to let me know down below as well. You what happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram and Ali Talks Music. Till next time. Peace. Perfect.